So like we talked about in the last video, it wouldn't make sense to draw the pictures in this one because since it's dogs, two cats, the cats is dealing with the uh, number three here. Since it's the second value, cats was listed second after dogs. We would have to count by threes all the way to we get to 90 cats. So you'd be drawing 90 cats there. Or if you're doing the chart method that we saw in the last video, it would take 30 rows. Since three goes into 90, 30 times it would take 30 rows. So whatever would be in that 30th row would give us our answer. So that's why in this case, and I'll do it again, the quickest way is the, the ticket. So I'm looking at this, dogs, two cats, dogs is first, that's my numerator, cats is second, dogs over cats, four, two, three, and this is why the ticket method or set it up as a fraction is gonna be the quickest. You just have to put the 90 in the right place, which is why the ticket's so important. We see that cats, it's on the bottom, that's a denominator, so the 90 goes here, and like I said, goes in 30 times, so times 30 times 30, so 120. Now remember, it's not 120 over 90. We can't have a fraction of a cat and dog saying if there were 90 cats, that means there's 120 dogs. And the real reason we wanna use this stuff is when we get into fractions and decimals, the pictures and the chart's gonna be kinda of hard here, kinda of difficult to draw. So like if we have three and a half tablespoons of flour, so the recipe calls for 3.5 tablespoon, tablespoons, should say, of flour for every 15 tablespoons of milk, how many tablespoons of flour would be needed if 45 tablespoons of milk were used? Uh, first of all, you wouldn't want to draw the picture because you'd be drawing 45 milks. But in this case, I did. I draw 15 M's here for milk, which means I have to draw three and a half tablespoons of flour. So instead of drawing like F, 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 and I don't know how to draw half of an F, so I'm gonna use circles here. So we have one hole, two holes, three holes, and it's three and a half, so it'd be three and a half. Then we gotta do this until we get to 45 milks. So then I add another row of 15 milks. So 15 plus 15 gives me 30. So we're getting there, but not quite. I have to make another row of my flour. So again, it's three and a half. We have one, two, three, and a half. Last but not least, one more row of M's, 15, 30, 45. That means this next row is going to give me how many tails in the flower I need. So I have one, two, remember for every 15, it's three and a half. So I'm drawing three and a half circles in each row. Since this is now 45 milks, tablespoons of milks, this is how many tablespoons of flour I'm gonna need. So then I'm gonna have to count these. We have one, two, three holes, four, five, six holes, seven, eight, nine holes. And then I have two halves here, so together those make one hole. So we have nine, ten, and then we have one half left over. So that's ten and a half. Ten and one half. So 45 tablespoons of milk are used. Milk. That means ten and a half tablespoons of flour are used. That's a lot of work. Much quicker. We set up our ticket from the get-go. Flour to milk, and again, we have 3.5 to three and a half for every 15. And then it says, if 15 tablespoons of milk were used, milk's on bottom, so 45, or I should say, if 45 tablespoons were used of milk, whoa, 45 goes on bottom. We gotta figure out 15 goes into 45 three times, so 15 times three is 45, so 3.5 times three, work it out to the side, doing a calculator, 3.5 times three does give us 10.5. That is why we prefer this way. It's a, it's a lot less work less room for error and mistakes, and just it's a quicker way, saves you some time. So takeaway is probably the easiest way to do it. Now, when we're looking at types of ratios, there's two types of them. We have part to part and part to whole. And we see the red line, this is a good area to stop for notes if they are not already in your math notebook. The first type of ratio is part to part. This is gonna be a smaller part of a group compared to another smaller part of a group. So if we had uh, students in the classroom or in a school, okay, we would it would be the boys to the girls. So instead of dealing with all the students, we take a part of the students. So we have the boys to the girls. In all, they make the total, but since we're comparing boys to girls, that's part to part. Whereas part to whole is the smaller part compared to the entire part, the entire group. So in this case, we're using the school again. It would be like 
boys to all the number of students or six graders to the entire um, to the entire population at Coolwood. Okay, so an example here we use Skittles part to part in a jar of Skittles comparing the red to the green. We're just caring about the red and the green. The rest of the colors don't matter. So since it's a smaller part to a smaller part, red to green is part to part. Kind of similar example dealing with the jar of Skittles comparing the red to all of the Skittles. So since it says all of them, we're doing the total amount, that makes it part to whole. So whenever you see something dealing with all of it, the entire amount, that's part to whole. Whenever it's a small part to another small part, that's part to part. Last thing before we go over the actual math in this lesson, watch for the keywords and and the word or. Okay? When you see these, we are going to have to combine the smaller parts. And I'm going to show you what this means in a second. Whenever it says like, if we're using Skittles, if it said green and red to blue, this part's green and red. We got to combine the number of greens and reds we see compared to just the blue. So if I were to, I'm going to take this away. The first example, what's the ratio of blue or red to all? Okay, so this is going to be a part to whole. Since it says all of them, it's part to whole. But we have to combine the blue and red. So actually what this ratio would look like would be like blue slash red. If you combine these two, so all of them, I would use T for total. So blue to red, blue and red, blue or red, combine those to the total amount. Another one, what is the ratio of green and yellow? So we're combining the greens and the yellow to just the blue ones here. So again, this is going to be part to part, but it takes a little more work because we have to combine the green and yellow. So this will look like green slash yellow, combining those to just the blue. Okay, so now's a good time to pause the video and try these three on your own. Watching for keywords that lets us know is it part to part, part to whole, and watching for the keywords and and or. Okay, so pause the video. We're gonna go over it in just a second. All right, let's start with this top left one, dealing with the triangles. We have the ratio of shaded triangles to unshaded triangles. So since it doesn't say to all the triangles, I know it's part to part. We got the shaded to the unshaded. So if I'm going to make a ticket, it would look like shaded to unshaded. Or I'm just abbreviating here, SD. So shaded is going to be the ones that are colored in. It doesn't matter what color. It could be colored in black, gray, green, in this case, blue. There are three triangles that are colored in. So there's three shaded to how many that are unshaded? One, two, three, four, five, six. So three to six would be my ratio. Now the thing with ratios, they're always gonna be simplified. If you don't know how to simplify, if you have one of these calculators, you can type in three ABC six and it'll reduce it for you. But at this point, you should be able to reduce this. Know that three goes into both three and six. So you divide these both by three. So three to six simplified is one to two. Which means there are one shaded triangle for every two. Now, if we split this up, we drag these to make it look neater and group it, that statement's true. For every one shaded, there are two correlating unshaded triangles with it. All right, looking at the one, let's go underneath it. In a bag of marbles, there are five blue marbles, four red marbles, 12 green marbles and four yellow. I'm gonna write this information down here. We have five blue, four red, 12 green, and four yellow. What is the ratio of blue or red to green? So look, we have blue or red. So I combine these. So first of all, look at the blue. We have five blue and four red. So in all, since the word or here, we know we gotta combine those five plus four is nine. To the number of green, how many greens we have? 12. 9 to 12 mathematically is right, but it's never going to be an answer choice because we've got to simplify it. Again, 3 goes into both of 9 and 12. 2, 9, and 12, I should say. So when you divide these, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So the ratio in simplest terms is going to be 3 to 4. Hopefully, you got 3 to 4 there. 9 to 12 is simple, just get in the habit of simplifying them. Last but not least, top right one. In a line to see a movie, there are 10 girls and 5 boys. 
What is the ratio of boys to students in simplest form? Kind of give you a hint here, it's underlined. It's boys to students. Now it doesn't specify what students, so we're gonna do it's asking about all the students, so boys and girls. So this is gonna be a part to whole. Now we know in the problem that there are five boys. So that B is five. So the number of students, well, if there are five boys and ten girls in all. There are 15 students, so we have 5 to 15, which is right, but notice it's not an answer choice because we've got to simplify it. So looking at what number goes in both 5 and 15, the greatest common one is going to be 5, so divide these both by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So 1 to 3 is going to be our answer there. So we got D. Okay, a couple more practice problems here. This one is in a chart form. Hopefully you can see it, it's kind of blurred on the screen. If not, see if you can pause the video, zoom in if you can. But this time, at this time, pause the video and try these two questions that go along with this table here. What is the ratio of swimmers in the advanced group to the total swimmers? And what is the ratio of beginner or intermediate to the total swimmers? Pause it, when you're done, get back to me one second. Let's do this one. What is the ratio of swimmers in the advanced group to the total? So since it says total, again, this is part to whole, deal with the total amount. Let's look at the advanced first. There are four advanced swimmers. So we have four to the total of swimmers. Now, one way to find the total is just add how many there are. You add 18 plus 8 plus 4, you get 30. Or if you read the problem, it tells you there's 30 of them. So we have 4 to 30 which is right mathematically, but when you simplify this, divide these both by two, we get two to 15, which is the best answer choice as that is it's in simplified terms. Next one, what is the ratio of beginner or intermediate? Two of the total. So again, it's gonna be part to whole. We know that the total is 30, but we gotta add beginner and intermediate together in order to get that first number in a ratio. So we have beginner, Intermediate, 18 plus 8 gives us 26. So 26 in that first two groups to the total, 26 and 30. Right mathematically, again, simplify it, divide these both by 2. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So this one is 13 to 15. One more practical. Done with another chart here. Pause the video, try this one on your own, and then you should be good to go to answer whatever assignment we have for you today. The chart below represents the inventory of a gym teacher. What is the ratio of tennis balls to baseballs? What is the ratio of soccer balls and lacrosse balls to basketballs? Pause the video, unpause it when you are ready to move on. All right, look at the first one. What is the ratio of tennis balls to baseballs? But look. There's basketballs, baseballs, tennis balls, soccer balls, and cross balls. Because it's only asking about tennis balls and baseballs, ask yourself, is it part to part or part to whole? Since we're only dealing with this one and this one, that's going to be part to part here. Okay, smaller part or smaller part. So seven, or, excuse me, seven goes to tennis balls. Tennis balls is first. So we have T to B is our ticket. There are seven tennis balls for every 24 baseballs. Can we reduce it? Well, there is not a number that goes in both 7 and 24. So this is the most simplified that I get, 7 and 24. Or if you write it as a fraction, that's right too. But it's not really 7 and 24, it's 7 and 24. For every 7 tennis balls, there will be 24 baseballs. Last but not least, what is the ratio of soccer balls and lacrosse balls? We've got to combine these. So we'll get the number of soccer balls we have. We've got 5 soccer balls. And lacrosse balls, that's five and three. So all together, I'm going to make the ticket. We have soccer or lacrosse and lacrosse, two basketballs. So five and three, that's eight to how many basketballs? 36. So for every eight soccer or lacrosse balls, there's going to be a lot more basketballs. There's going to be 36 of them. And the eight to 36, they're both even, so we know that we can simplify this. Uh, we would divide these both by four. Four goes in above these, so eight divided by four is two. 
36 divided by 4 is 9, so the most simplified that answer gets is going to be 2 to 9. So for every 2 of these, there will be 9 of those. And that is it for our ratio review. You're good to move on. Hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't, go back, rewatch it, move at your own pace, take notes as you need to, and thanks for watching.